What's good everybody? I am back with another video and before I get started with my top 10 sneaker pickups of 2020 list, I want to say thanks for stopping by and if this is your first time here, if you haven't done so already, make sure you do the right thing and hit the subscribe button below and if you enjoyed the video then give your girl a thumbs up. So first and foremost, I want to say thank you to everyone who participated in my December giveaways. It was my birthday month and I wanted to celebrate it by doing something special for my subscribers. So I held six different giveaways throughout the entire month of December and there were six winners. So congratulations to those who won. And if you took the L, you didn't know about it, you were sleeping on it, or you're trying to win another one, another one. Here's your chance. So this is 2021. We're in a new year. This is my first video of the year. So new year, new giveaway. So make sure you watch the entire video to know what I'm dropping next. And for more information, read the description below. So good luck. All right, so let's get it. I initially had this great idea to do a top five sneaker pickups of 2020 list. And I dropped that idea really quick. Like, what was I thinking, right? Because that's just ridiculous. There's so many sneaker drops this year. It felt like it was the most I've ever seen before. Like, there were new colorways, different collaborations, retros and re-retros, shoes I've never even seen before that hit the market. And so it felt like I was constantly entering raffles all day long. And being on the sneakers app, not only on the Saturday morning, but there were Thursdays and Fridays. There was a Cyber Monday. And not just at 7 a.m., but at 9 a.m. because of early access, that's when it drops. And so I just had to expand my list to top 10. And even then, I was struggling to narrow everything down of everything I copped to just top 10, right? Because I didn't count exactly how many sneakers I picked up this year. I just know it was a lot. A lot. There were tons in my size. I picked up a lot in other sizes. A lot. And so this is my top 10 sneakers that I picked up in my size. And I have a few honorable mentions at the end of sizes I managed to cop as well. So without further ado, let's start my countdown. Kicking off my countdown at number 10, this is the NA6 collaboration for the Gel Light 3s in the Pro colorway. And it's only appropriate to call it the Pearls because this is the 30th anniversary of the Gel Light 3s. And so traditionally, Pearls are given to folks during their 30th wedding anniversary. So I thought that was really cute. I hit on these three features and these are my first pair of ASICs so I don't have anything like this in my collection, not even a similar color. Like I don't have any pinks. I have a few purples like my Aqua 8s or my Grade 5s but nothing pastel like this so I am digging it a lot. I really like how the shoe uses an extremely soft and plush suede for the uppers and this 3M back here is really awesome too because I'm a sucker for 3M. And then for the insole there's some gel technology so it really contours to your feet. And so overall, I think the shoe is extremely comfortable and I'm all about that cozy life, right? And I think I upped it to a whole nother level this year due to the shelter at home orders because I've always been about that sweatpants hair tie type of lifestyle. Chilling with no makeup on, that's when you're the prettiest. I hope that y'all don't take it wrong. And I used to say that I chose to live it that way, right? But I think this year, the cozy life just chose all of us. So this is my number 10. Number 9, this is the Air Jordan 13 in the flip colorway and I am so glad that they brought it back this year with the OG look and the OG features just like in 1998. In this 2020 release, they finally put back the 3M reflector behind the mesh panel because in my 2010 pair, which is the second time it retroed, it did not have it. And it's such a classic feature so I'm so glad that they put it back on this shoe here. So I hit on these on the Shock Drop on the sneakers app right before the grand finale of The Last Dance. So I had these in hand probably two weeks before the actual drop date, which is always a nice thing because I didn't have to wake up early on a Saturday morning trying to pick these up. To me, this is such a classic colorway and I'm so glad that they retroed it the right way. And I feel like every time I wear these shoes, I always get compliments about them. And so it's about time that I retire my 2010 pair and start rocking these. So this is my number nine. At number 8, this is the Air Jordan 1 Retro High CO.JP in the Midnight Navy colorway. And even though this is the first time we've seen them in the United States, it's been around since 2001 because it was a Japan only exclusive along with three other colorways. So I'm so glad that they finally dropped stateside and it looks really good. I hit on these on the sneakers app through an exclusive access and it was really exciting because I was able to hit on three size tiers. So I copped a men's, a GS, as well as a toddler's. So I always talk about how I'm so boring and I never swap out my laces for the alternative color. But this time I did. Um, they came with the oval laces in the midnight navy colorway and I wasn't really digging it. 
So I swapped it out for the flat white laces that it came with and I like it a lot more. So I think it looks really good like this. So in 2020, we saw this color come stateside along with the metallic silver pair. And even though both pairs have the same silver metallic swoosh and the jeweled wings logo, I personally think that this Midnight Navy pair looks a lot better, so I'm glad that I have these in hand. And I would expect for the other two colorways to come stateside as well in anticipation for Tokyo 2021, so we'll see how that goes. But this is my number 8. At number 7, this is the Air Jordan 1 Retro High in the black and metallic gold colorway. And they finally put out a high top version of this shoe. Because in 2003, they dropped the mids. And I didn't cop those, but I copped the low fat ones in 2011. And I always wondered why they don't have a high top version because I knew I was just gonna love it immediately, right? And so they finally did this year, so it looks really good. It's so interesting to me because I am not a patent leather type of person at all. I'm more of a matte black type of girl. For example, the patent leather on my 11s is just enough, there's just enough shine there, but it's not doing too much, right? Cause this shoe right here is so flashy to me. For example, this gold collar here or this gold piece below the ankle collar is so unnecessary but I still really like the shoe. And maybe it's a nostalgic thing for me because it reminds me of high school or maybe it's because these were gifted so I really like them more. But either way and for whatever reason, maybe I'm just sentimental, um, this is my number 7. Number six, this is the Air Jordan 1 Retro High in the Satin Red colorway, also known as the Satin Snake colorway. And what's there not to like about the shoe? It's a Jordan 1 high top, which is my absolute favorite. So red, black, and white, which are classic Jordan 1 colors and you can't really go wrong with it, right? And there's some snake imprint. And I've always had an affinity towards the animal, and maybe it's because I'm the year of the snake, but I really like it a lot. I like how the imprint is here, especially on the swoosh too. It just looks really good to me. This pair is like the inverse pair or the sister pair of the satin black tone ones that dropped in 2019. And that was easily one of my top 10 cops of that year. So this had to have been on my top 10 pickup list this year. So this is my number six. So we're halfway through my countdown and this is my number five. And these are the Atlas Nike SB Dunk High Lost at Seas. And the story behind the shoe is so wild to me. So this shoe was inspired by the great sneaker spill of 1990, where thousands of sneakers fell overboard on its way from Korea to the United States, and they were washed ashore along the Pacific Northwest. So this shoe has that vintage vibe with the cracked leather and the sunspots, and this pretty yellow midsole here, so very retro looking, right? And I didn't think that I would like that vintage type of vibe, because I like my stuff looking really new and really fresh, but it really works on this shoe. I think this collaboration was super dope and some may say that I'm biased because Alice is a skateboarding shop in the Bay Area and I gotta give it that local love or whatever, but you gotta give credit where credit's due and this shoe has incredible detail and I like it a lot. It's such high quality and all the apparel and all the accessories were really high quality too. And I hit on a raffle in the store so I got the limited edition box so it makes the shoe even better. So this is my number 5. Number four, this is the Yeezy Boost 350 V2 in the core black colorway, also known as the bread colorway for many people. And so I know that this dropped in 2017, but I was not able to cop them in 2017, so I managed to hit on these when they re-released this year. In 2017, this was the first colorway for the Yeezy Boost 350 V2s, so it's such a classic colorway to me. And there's a pull tab which I always appreciate, because lately my recent pickups haven't had it and it looked a little incomplete, right? And I'm not really sure when the next time we'll see a pull tab on the shoes, so I'm really glad that I was able to pick up on these this year. So this is my number four. At number three, this is the Off-White Air Jordan 5 collaboration in the Sale colorway, and this is one of two different colorways that dropped this year between Virgil and the Off-White team and Jordan brand. This shoe is a take on the Fire Red 5s, which is one of my all-time favorite Jordans with a remix to it. It has a ripstop nylon material, so it's covered all over in the upper, so it looks really good. And it's so interesting because there's some unfinished lining, some exposed foam, and a pre-yellow outsole, so it gives off that vintage vibe. And like I mentioned earlier, I'm not one to like that vintage vibe because I used to think that silica packets are my friend and grass is not. But it really works well on this shoe and I'm glad I was able to hit on these on exhibition. So this is my number three. At number 
number two, this is the Nike SB Dunk Low Pro in the Elephant colorway. And a lot of people call it the Atmos Elephant colorway, but it wasn't a collaboration, so it was just inspired by that shoe. Similar to those Air Max 1s, this shoe here has a clear jade swoosh, which is like a Tiffany blue color, so it's really cute. And then there's some elephant print. And I'm a sucker for elephant print, like on my Blast Event 3s or my Katrina 3s. So it looks really good on the shoe, and the quality on the shoe is incredible. So I hit on these on 510 skates, and it's so difficult for me to hit on my size, so a size 4. So I'm so glad that I was able to hit on these. So this is my number 2. At number 1, this is the Air Jordan 1 Retro High in the Dark Mocha colorway. And I am so glad that I was able to hit on these on the sneakers app. It was probably one of my better mornings of 2020. And I just really like the color blocking in this colorway. Like the color blocking is really classic and really minimal and that's just how I like my Jordan 1s. And a lot of people compare this colorway to the Travis Scott 1s and for obvious reasons, right? Because of the dark mocha. But in my opinion, I think the color blocking looks closer in resemblance to the black tone 1s or the old love pair from the BMP pack. So this black toe cap here looks more closer in resemblance to those two colorways as well as the color blocking for the heel and the ankle collar. So I like this shoe a lot. The colorway is super fire to me. I think the dark mocha complements the sale really well. And I'm gonna give a pass to this white nylon tongue here because it should have been sale. But it's hiding behind these super dope pigeon fairy laces. So this was a collaboration between Savage Hodge and Staple. So they look super fire. So I guess I'm not too boring after all, right? Because I swapped out the laces on two out of my top 10 sneakers of 2020. So at number one, the Air Jordan 1 Retro High in the Dark Mocha colorway, aka my cafe sedas, are my top sneaker pickup of 2020. So that concludes my top 10 sneaker pickups of 2020 list in my size, and I have a few honorable mentions of other sizes I managed to pick up throughout the year as well. So let's take a look. My first honorable mention is the Denim Air Max 95 collaboration in the Volt colorway, and this is a take on the OG Neon colorway for the Air Max 95s, and we saw that re-release earlier in December, so that was super dope. And so I really like this collaboration here because there's so many little details that go into it, and it looks really good. This collaboration was with an Amsterdam-based jean company, so all the panels and the mudguard are made out of denim, so it looks really good. And then for the insole, there's some scissors imprinted on it, as well as the lace tip, so I think it looks really dope. I'm not sure how many of these were produced, but it felt super limited, so I'm glad I was able to pick up on a pair. And it's really interesting because I also caught the Air Max 95 Neons that dropped in December in my size, and they haven't arrived yet. So I guess it's a blessing in disguise because it would have made my top 10 list even more difficult, right? And so I'll do a separate review on those later on, so hang tight for that. Another sneaker that I had to put on my list is the Kobe 5 Pro Trolls Girls EYBL in the forest green colorway, and I hit on these during Mama Week. And I think it finally cleared up my dry spell on the sneakers app because for a minute it was so difficult for me to hit on anything. The thought and intentions behind the design as well as the attention to detail are so incredible to me. It's like a piece of art. And I especially like how there's a heartbeat traction for the outsole as well as a Kobe code for the insole. It's just so creative. So this had to been on my honorable mention list. So RP to one of the greatest to ever do it. Last but certainly not least, this is the Sean Clymer Nike SB Dunk Low collaboration in the Holiday Special colorway, and I wish I hit on these in my size. They're so pretty. I feel like there were a total of six that were produced in size 4 or something. I really like this shoe. I think it's so cute. I like how the powdered blue panels are made out of suede, so it feels really nice. And this gold swoosh here is different because it's like a glossy gold, whereas my black and metallic gold ones is like a brushed metal metallic gold color. So it's different, but it looks really good. And I usually don't like glitter or confetti stuff or streamers or like celebratory things like that. But this gold glitter also looks really good and really festive. So this had to have been on my honorable mentions list of top 2020 picks. As you can see, I have not undiessed any of my top 10 pairs of 2020 in the past year. I usually undies a pair if I hop on a plane or if I travel somewhere and the only places I've been to lately are various Costco's in the Bay Area and it's gonna be like that for a little bit longer because I don't have any travel plans in the near future so maybe I'll just flex on them the next time I go to Costco looking for toilet paper or something. 
Um, but the past four months have been such a whirlwind. I've been just growing my channel, so I've been just creating content nonstop. So thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed, um, who liked and shared and posted and reposted my videos. It's really exciting to see people enjoy the videos. And so I hope that 2021 brings all of us more W's so that I can continue to put out more content. So happy new year and thanks for tuning in. Perfect. Perfect. amazing idea to start shooting tonight for my next video and this whole time there have been fireworks going off like like that one right there um, so the block is hot and so I guess I have to cut my shooting short or cut my shooting for this night and start again tomorrow morning um, so happy new year everyone and stay safe <laughs>